good morning we got the roof on the post and beam barn just in time we got about a half inch of rain the other night and now it's snowing out so i'm glad the roof is on me and gina will be putting up all of the soffit and the siding material next so it's a little chilly so hopefully the wind don't blow while we're up in that lift because we're gonna be up high today doing a lot of soffit work to get ready to get it all sided. It's gonna be nice when it's sided. Then we can work on the inside and get the animals there. And hopefully winter holds off long enough so we can get the inside of the barn done and get all the animals in there. I'm sure they'll appreciate it. All right, are you ready to get going with the rest of this barn build, me and you? I'm ready, I'm gonna get right up high. <laughs> <laughs> so I wanna thank Ken from Ken's Carpentry and his guys, Dan and Chad, for helping us with this barn build. We didn't plan on doing it this year. This was gonna be a next year project, but there's a reason why, and Ken will let you guys know later on why we did that this year. So we are excited to have all the heavy lifting done with the help of Ken and his guys. They had to move on to some other projects. They have two to finish wrapping up and they still have one more that they need to get built by the end of the year. So I am excited. We got this much done. The roof is on. We are dried in pretty much. Me and Gina, are got to start doing some soffit work. We got to bend some metal work first and then we can get up in the lift. I know you're excited to get up in the lift. I'm okay, I think, in the lift as long as you don't jiggle it around too much. <laughs> but I'm luckily luckily didn't have to get up on the roof right that's not gonna happen we got about a half inch of rain the other night we got a little bit of rain coming in but not too much so we have some snow flurries today and it's pretty good in here but then we also need to figure out the exact layout of how we want to finish off the inside of the barn so that is going to be some things we are thinking about so if you guys have any ideas leave them down below so the barn is 32 wide this way and 48 this way. So in between each post this way, it's eight feet. On the gable ends, we have 10 feet from that outside post to this post. And then from in between this post and this post is 12 feet wide. So if we ever wanna put a livestock gate or need to put a livestock gate in here, a 12 foot wide livestock gate will fit perfectly. And then we have another 10 feet here. You guys have any recommendations on how to finish off the inside for our cows, the goat, the sheep, well, the goats, the sheep, and then our chickens and pigs in the future and other animals? Leave it in the comments down below. Well, I do know you're gonna want your chickens and your pigs on this side anyway, because you're already talking about adding on a, a run. run out here. So yep. you're definitely gonna want that stuff over here. So we know that's a given. All right, we got some black and white coil stock that we need to cut and make our J channel for all of our metal siding. I just wanna mark out 10 feet. So it's a 10 foot break. Let's go 9 6. The snow looks so pretty. We grab that end. Maybe I can.
All right, we made the executive decision to move inside, get out of the wind, and work where it's a little bit cooler. Ooh. And work where it's a little bit warmer. Said, why not just bring it inside? That's what we have the shop for. So we brought it in. It will make working with this aluminum a lot easier because just a little bit of wind makes it flop around. So, and then everything that you touch, it's metal right now, so it's a little bit trilly. So, we we'll just come inside, and it's pretty cool. Lock it. Last one. Here you go. Scared me for a second. There we go. You ready to go up? So. Ah. Oh. It goes down, then it goes up, I guess. I'll be alright if I set up my goal. Well, all the weight goals. Okay, I'm probably gonna hold on. You do. Going in a little bit. Or, yeah, we gotta go in a little bit. Alright, we're gonna go down, get some more J channel for the vinyl and for the metal. So this will fit the soft fit material and this will fit the metal siding. We'll put the hammer up and come back up and get that nail nailed in better. So before you move the yeah, we just lift, go you'll, you'll put do the soft fit and stuff or whatever you need to do. Excuse no, me. we'll go all the way down, get all this done, and then we'll start working our way backwards with the soft fit. Okay. Turning. Thank you. At least I have perforation. Don't wiggle any more than it needs to wiggle. I get used to it. No, am I so, like, <laughs> no, I'm gonna tell you what I feel like right now. Dropping. Dropping. Like fast or? As fast as I can. I'm pushing very fast. Oh, good. Not bad to get jiggly. Or I'm not sure where you're going to go. Stop. Why would you do that? I'm trying to get you used to the jiggle. No. The jiggle wiggle. All of this makes the rest of my body get tense, so. Because it will go over, I just won't go under. Perfect.
All right, I go up. I gotta go up, snap a chalk line so I know where to stop putting my girts so I have a place to put our J channel for the soffit and J channel for the metal siding. So let's get up there. Right there, snap a chalk line. Maybe next time. We're gonna wanna go something like this. All right, so now we need to get our J channel for our soffit up. It is the next morning, it's 13 degrees out, a little chilly, but not too bad. I got all of the J channels up on the front and then on this gable end side. While we're set up over here, I'm gonna go back up, get our measurement, and we'll cut a bunch of our soffit material, get all this done, and then we'll go to the front, get the soffit in the front done, and then we'll go to the other gable end side and do that side. I wanna get all the high stuff done while we still have the lift. And then I'll worry about the backside. The backside we can do off ladder. So if we can get all of our soffit done, finish putting our girts up, get the tin siding up, say to, I don't know, we gotta figure out how far down we wanna come for now. We're gonna side all of it, but we're gonna do an overlap. So I'm thinking like to eight feet up we'll go. I'm just guessing right now. Then we'll get the siding done. And then I also wanna get some exterior lights up while we have the lift. And then we can work on all of the lower stuff and the lift can go back. Cause I'd hate to have the missing apart and still need the lift. So I wanna get all the upper stuff done, if that makes sense. So yeah, let me get up there. I'll get you a measurement. I'll go down the ladder, make sure the everything is the same. And then we'll set you up inside on the chop saw and get you chopping some soffit material. So if we go 11 and a half, let me go up there and make sure we're still the same. A little frosty this morning. I'm gonna have to get out the heater and mount my buttons. All right, let's get some ice melted. I'm surprised they don't make a cover to go over the control panel because the buttons get froze up. It's so nice to have the grid down solar system in the workshop so we can run stuff like that and I can keep our lift plugged in and charged up without the grid down. We wouldn't be using that blow dryer out here. so. Or maybe not even the lift. 
Eh, probably not even the lift. It'd be a lot more of a pain, especially this time of the year. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna go up and get a measurement. Let's go 11 and three quarters. That'll make it tighter. And I'd rather have it tighter than loose. It sure is chilly out here, but man, when that sun is out, it is beautiful. I love working out on the chilly mornings. You might get cold pretty quick. I want to go in after a while, but it is just so beautiful to be out here in this weather. Uh, so good. All right, let's go up. Gina! Gina! Come in! What? Come, I need you to come down here and lower me down. These buttons are froze again. I don't think it's going to be sticky enough. You got to tie it on too at the same time. You got to tie it in. Like it. Tie it first. Ready? I'm gonna keep this up here. Yeah. <laughs> Are you good now? I'm gonna find out. Well, now that Alice hopefully got the lift running, oh my gosh, I'm like, how is he gonna get down? So when I'm trying to help him to get the stuff going in my head, I'm thinking, how are we gonna get him down? Cause he's probably gonna have hook the ladder up and climb down or something crazy. So I'm like, oh, Lord, please really let him come down safely. The buttons were not working at all, what I was trying to do. Of course, he can't see what I'm doing, so he thinks I'm doing it wrong, and I may have been, but something should have been moving. So that wasn't making sense. There was one button in the basket making the boom go out that was working, but then that wasn't even doing anything. So for me, it means none of them are working. So I don't think it was something I was doing. We were able to get the heat gun up there and get the controls working. And that's up there with him now. So thank goodness for MacGyver skills, able to think outside the box, use the tape measure to get things up because I could have threw that extension cord a hundred times. Thank the Lord that we were able to get that to work and that hopefully all goes well now. So I'm gonna go ahead and continue cutting because that needs to get done. The funny thing is, is right before I got into the basket, I'm like, oh, I 
shouldn't use my cell phone for recording because if I get stuck up here, if something happens, I don't have a phone to call anybody with. And then the buttons froze up on me. <sighs> Cutting this vinyl reminds me of weed whacking so much because you'll be just going along everything's going good and then you'll get hit you right in the face or something and it just gives it a quick sting and then you get all oh, whatever going again and then it ting again and it just reminds me of that and that's the thing i don't like about weed whacking so i'll be happy when these are done it's not a big deal but when those one of those little pieces ping you off the face it stings a little that is looking good it's pretty chilly up there, but it's still nice out. I think we got about like 12 more feet. I had used up all of the pieces that I had originally brought up with me, so I gotta get more. The lift's working fine now. When I first got in, I pressed the buttons, everything worked. I went to press another button, and then that button got stuck and it wouldn't come back up, so that's how I got stuck up there. And right before that, I had put my phone in to use as the fit for video in, and I went, probably shouldn't take my cell phone out of my pocket. I might need it just in case something happens in the basket. And then I got stuck. Not a way I would expect to get stuck in a lift is having frozen buttons, but I'm gonna keep that heat gun with me so if the buttons do freeze up again, I can just defrost them. Uh, it's always something, but. All right, well, I'm glad I had the little heater still up there with me because when I was going to put the lift away and stow it, I had another button freeze up on me. It's so weird because it won't bother. And then all of a sudden it will, so. So that last piece I'm gonna save and do later once I have this all made. And I'm not worried about finishing this lower end up. I wanna get all the high stuff done first. So let's get the lift moved and we'll get out front and get the soffit all done for the front. All right, we got a little bit of snow overnight. Not enough to use our new Arctic snow plow yet. I'm getting antsy to try that, but we don't have enough snow yet. So we need to get up on this side of the gable end wall and do, we gotta put a nailer two by six up for our first girt. So means I gotta snap a chalk line 
we got to make sure we have room for our J channel for our soffit and the J channel for our siding to go up and in. So I want to get that all done. So we're going to get back up in the air, snap some chalk lines. All right. That was the easy part. One issue I'm having that's taking me a little bit longer is the truss company made the rafter tails on this end for a two by six subfascia, and then they made the rafter tails on the trusses for a two by four rafter up above. So, not the end of the world. We just gotta do a little custom thing. So that's got a two by six on it, and the rest of them have a two by four. They should have all been made for a two by four. It is what it is, not the end of the world. It's just making me do some more cutting, a little bit more up and down to get everything just right. And then we got to do some soffit returns on the bottom even, just so that way everything looks nice. But we're getting it. All right, now we can build our returns on this side and the other side. And then it's ready for siding. Well, then we gotta put some more girts up, but that's the last thing we gotta do for the high soffit stuff. I guess it's not high, but I'd like to finish up the gable and soffits before we start doing the siding. So we'll build the returns and then we're ready. One return done. Gotta go to the other side and get the other one up. It's raining out, so I got the camera away while I'm working on this. But I'm almost done, and it feels good to have that one done. First time I'm doing a return. Usually I don't do returns, but the way they sent the trusses, we had to do something, so that'll be nice. All right, we got the last return built and up. Now we're all done with the high soffit. We got the back soffit to do now, but we'll do that at a later date because the water is running off the back of that roof and it's dripping on me pretty good. Just got wet putting up the last of that eave overhang return. So this is where we're gonna end the video. Thanks for coming along on our homesteading journey. You guys are a huge blessing to us in our homestead. In the next video, we are working more on the barn. Our goal is by the end of the year to hit 500,000 subscribers. It's a pretty big goal, but we wanna see if we can get there. I think we can because half of you that are watching are not subscribed to the channel. And a lot of you that think you're subscribed to the channel, YouTube has unsubscribed you. So if you wanna go check, see if you're subscribed, hit the subscribe button if you're not, and we'll see you right back here in the next video. We appreciate all of you. Bye.